I will what? That's what I came to say. If that is the case, I will do it. Exodus 25, verse 1. And verse 2. Exodus 25, reading verse 1 and verse 2. The title says, If this is the case, I will do it. And the Lord God spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel. Let them give me an offering from everyone who gives it willingly from their hearts. You shall take it. Verse 8. And the Lord said, Let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Let's emphasize that point. Let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Moses, I am speaking to you. Let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. And the title is saying, if that is the case, I will do it. Are we together? God is saying, let them make me a sanctuary. Why? I want to dwell with you. The reason I am asking you to build is that I want my presence to be with you. And the title says, if that is the case, I will what? I'll do it. For God to ask to be with me, God desires to be with you. Must he then ask for permission to dwell with you? Must God plead to come and live in your household? If God desires to do it with me, if that is the case, I will do it. Is the pastor making sense so far? Are we together, Estes? This is a point where you stop analyzing the pastor. We are saying, if this is the case, I will what? <laughs> if this is the case, visiting a place and living in a place are two different things. When you visit a place, all you can see are things on the surface. When I visit your homes, I see plaster pray for me. Why am I praying for you? I am sick. The pastor visits your home. Please, pastor, pray for me. The only thing the pastor will know about you is your prayer request. But when he lives with you, he will see beyond the request. Are we together? If indeed living together shows more than what we know. If this is the case, I will do it. Are we together? Amen. Let's see if I'm with the church or you are still wondering. What is the title? If that is the what? What case? Let them make me a what? A sanctuary that I may dwell among them. And we are saying, if that is the case, I will what? 
I'll do it. Must God plead? No. If that is the case, I am going to do it. He delivered them from Egypt. He sent flies in Egypt. He sent lice in Egypt. He sent hailstorms in Egypt. To deliver them, he killed the firstborns of Egypt. He brought them out of the land of bondage, the house of slavery. After he had ensured their safety, he made them cross the Red Sea. Through Moses, they were fed by day, the night covered with the sun. When it was hot in the day, the cloud followed them. And when God ensured that they are saved, he said, let them make me a sanctuary. That I may dwell among them. And we are saying, if that is the case, I will do it. God ensures your survival. He serves you from a marriage which is about to break. He looks at the statistics in your community. Things are not okay. God gives you a testimony to testify. And God says, for me to ensure your life, I must dwell with you. Do not just enjoy my blessings. Allow me to live with you. It is my presence that ensured your safety. My presence saved you from diabetes. But must you just enjoy my miracles? Let them make me a sanctuary. Why? That I may dwell among them. And we are saying, if that is the case, I will do it. Are we together, brothers and sisters? Are you understanding the fact that God desires to live with you? Amen. Amen. Estates, are we together? If this is the what? What shall you do? What will you do? Are we together, dear church? Why are you building? He says that I may dwell among you. And if God says that I am saying, I will do it. To build God a place to stay must not be an agenda of negotiation. When God blesses you, do not negotiate where he shall stay. Count your blessings in life. Look at where he has brought you. See how he has kept your family safe. Look at how many funerals are being announced day in and day out. And God says to solve that problem, let them make me a son that I may dwell amongst them. And if God is proposing a solution, we are saying, if this is the case, we shall what? We shall do it. Are we together, dear church? If this is the what? I will do it. Let's go to 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. We shall remember the title that says that if this is the case, I will do it. 
if my people whose people God's people if my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and seek my face and pray to me I will listen from heaven heal their land and we are saying if this is the case I will do it verse 15 therefore my eyes shall be opened towards this place and my ears shall be attentive to prayer offered in this place what place is God talking about let them make me a sanctuary whatever prayer is offered in the sanctuary Whatever songs are given in the sanctuary, whatever testimonies are given in the sanctuary, God says, I will hear from heaven. I will look at you with my eyes and I shall be attentive to what you say. Therefore, if he says, build me a house, we are saying, if that is the request, that is the case, I will do it. Amen. Amen. We shall build God a what? Now, the thing about God is this. If you think it, in Exodus 25, we read verse 1, verse 2, he says, Everyone who gives from their heart willingly. When God shows you a miracle, your response must be willing. When God delivers you, your response must be deliberate. When God protects and sets a hedge around your family, your response must be from a willing heart. It is why we are saying, if this is the case, I will do it. Let's see if the people have understood what the pastor is saying. How many have understood? You know, the sermon is only over when it is understood. How many are saying? We understand what you are saying. Historical errors us. That when you set for God a place to worship, the Lord rewards you with testimonies in your life. Historical evidence tells us that barren women like Hannah prayed in the temple and the Lord responded. Historical evidence tells us that a woman caught in adultery found salvation in the sanctuary. It was in the sanctuary that God said, Go and sin no more. Amen. Therefore, to build God a sanctuary makes a lot of sense. If a sanctuary can influence the decisions of your life, if a sanctuary can change the course of your action, and God says, let them build me a sanctuary. If the sanctuary can influence my life, if this is the case, I will do it. Mm. 
Amen. Are we together, dear church? If the sanctuary can give Hana a child, if the sanctuary can restore an adulterous woman, Moses went to the sanctuary. Jesus swept to the sanctuary. Hannah prayed in the sanctuary. All these men and women were in contact with the sanctuary. Why? Because the presence of God was in the sanctuary. And if that is the case, I will do it. If historical evidence says make God a sanctuary, we must not negotiate but give God willingly as He places. It is why we are saying if this is the case, I we want to do it. Are we together? God says do it. Historical evidence says do it. Ellen White says we have nothing to fear for the future. Except as we shall forget what God has done in the past. If God in the past gave victory through the sanctuary to have sufficient victory in your life, have a place for God to stay. And that is the place we are saying, let them make me a what? A sanctuary. Why is he so interested in the sanctuary? Testimonies in themselves are not enough. But when you testify with God's presence in it, it shall make sense. Amen. God said, Do it. Historical evidence says do it. Our current situation demands that we do it. God says, look at you. In three months, 30,000 divorce cases. Look at you. Today you are in love, tomorrow you are out of love. He says, Look at you. Today is a good husband, tomorrow he is a terrorist. Look at you. Look at you struggling with your diseases. Look at you. Look at your questions every night. Look at yourselves. The current situation demands God must be in the situation. In order to do that, let them make me a what? Essentially, if God can contribute in the conversation, we are saying, if this is the case, I will do it. Brothers and sisters, the objective of this sermon is just to tell you, we must do it. Therefore, in the case of calling for days to promote building, it is only when you understand. God is worthy of worship in your life. If God is the center of your family, if God gave you that job, if this is the case, we are saying, I will what? 
So brothers and sisters, we are saying to build God a place to stay is the logical decision. To have a place for God's name is the best choice. When God is in the midst of divorce cases, there are reconciliations. When God is introduced in a home, there is peace. Amen. God is the one that makes the difference in your life. And God says, for me to be relevant for you, build me a place to stay. As a faithful Christian who can testify, I am saying, if that is his request, I will do it. Have we understood? Amen. Can the someone come to an end now? Amen. You know, if you have understood, we are done. God is good. And all the time, we are saying, if this is the what? I will what? If God is good all the time, if that is the case, we must do it. Once we do it, brothers and sisters, we have a place to pray, a place to run to, a place to consult, a place to make relevant decisions in our lives. If this, if this place is to be called a house of prayer, if that is the case, we shall do it and we will do it. Those who are saying we'll do it, raise your hands. We are saying God cannot be bleeding. We will do it. Raise your hands. We are saying whatever little I have, I will do it. Okay, you can drop your hands. When you see a card coming through, let me tell you something. When discussions come to build God a place, that is the agenda which must make you not sleep at home. And we conclude it this way. He gave you a job. He has saved you from a life-threatening situation. Your children are succeeding wherever they are. You are not there, but his presence is with them. Then he tells you, make me a place to stay. Is that a discussion we must fight? God's presence is relevant, brothers and sisters, to end the announcements of funeral in the States. Amen. When, when God is in the picture, the announcements shall be testimonies. Sabbath number one, we have lost the soul. Sabbath number two, we have lost the air. Sabbath number three, we have lost the sea. Sabbath number five, we have lost the tea. God says, let me be in the situation. And if that is the case, we are saying, we shall what? Amen. I am sweating. Can I see? If that is the case, what must we do? If that is the case, what must we do? I am saying it is only those who can testify that God is good that will do it. Yes.
Don't look at the chairman, look at the one giving you victory. Amen. And therefore, I conclude with a title that says, If this is the word, the case, we shall what? No, thank you, neighbor, you say, If this is the case, we shall what? When you go home, we are saying if that is the agenda, we shall do it. Amen. Now those who are saying we do it, let's raise our hands and commit our pledges to God in our hands. So that we pray together. You are saying, Lord, I'll help in doing it. I don't want to be forced. I know you are good and I will do it. It's as if you are begging. You are saying, Lord, look at me. I'll do it. Yeah. It is why we are saying, if this is the what? The case, we shall what? Let us pray. We want to say thank you, Father, with our hands raised up in the, uh, in, in the, up in the air. That Heavenly Father, because you have been victorious in our lives, because you have given us testimonies to tell, you are around us. Some of us must be dead by now. But because of your presence, we are alive and standing today. Then you demand and say, please give me a place to stay. Dear Lord, must be patient. We must force people to do. It is only for one who says, I have seen how good, and because of that, I will do it willingly. Dear Lord, if this is the case, that you want a place to stay, our hands are raised up saying, we are going to do the best we can in our abilities. May you be with us. Bless the church today, even as we continue to worship you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen.